The Supreme Court judges have been asked to nullify the presidential poll outcome as declared by IBC chairman Wafula Chebukati, with petitioners telling the court that none of the presidential contenders crossed the threshold set by the Constitution for a winning candidate. According to the petitioner's submissions, there were inconsistencies in the number of voters who participated in the August 9th presidential election. And the discrepancies have cited as evidence shows that William Ruto's declaration as president-elect was a nullity. And as Francis Gashuri reports, the audit of voter register by KPMG has been used by the petitioners to pose the 50% plus one question. The declaration of William Ruto as president-elect by IBC chairman Wafula Chebukati at the Bombers of Kenya on 15th of August was at the heart of the petitioner's case for nullification of the presidential poll outcome. The petitioners, among them Azimio Laumoja, one Kenya flag bearer Raila Odinga, and his running mate Martha Karua, urging the seven-judge bench to overturn Chebukati's declaration, insisting none of the presidential contenders attained more than half of the total votes cast in the August. August 9th Uhuru Kenyatta succession race. If the total number of voters that take part in the election do not agree with the votes that are counted as cast in accordance with Article 138.4, if they don't agree, then it means that the results of that election are not accurate, they're not transparent, and they're not uh, accountable. Mathematically, and this is where the law meets mathematics, no candidate attained the 50%. If the chairman read the results that he read and the percentages that he read out of the registered voters that cast their votes, my lord, this court has no option but to nullify this election. There's no option. There's no option. The petitioners citing what they termed inconsistencies in the number of voters who cast their ballots in the presidential race and lack of transparency in verification of the results declaration forms at the Bombers of Kenya before Chebukati announced the final tally. The chairman executed a very well calculated scheme to grab the election and to run the election on his own. It is my submission that when you look at the systemic issues arising and affecting the integrity of this election, should we even pay attention to the numbers which we are now being fronted? If the system was compromised from the beginning, the universe of the elections had been compromised from the beginning, that whatever numbers will come out of that universe of the election, the voter register, does not matter. And I do believe even the third respondent, if he was the one filing this petition, would raise the same issues that I'm raising today. My Lord, Mr. Omtata is a serial litigator and a public interest, a public defender. Busia Senator-elect Okia Omtata, who is one of the petitioners, claiming there were 140,138 votes in the presidential election that were unaccounted for, a figure that is higher than the 69,000 votes, Ruto crossed the 50% plus one threshold to be declared winner in the first round of the contest. The total number of votes garnered by the four presidential candidates was, according to Omtata, including the rejected votes, less than the voter tunnel declared by Chebukati during a media briefing at the National Tiling Center, a move the petitioner claims was a sign of collusion to attain a predetermined outcome in the presidential race. You look, they tell you at 25 hours, on 9th August 2022, some 13,731,215 people voted. Polling turnout recorded on 10th August is 14,239,000. 862 ballots. And on the 10th, that is the day after the voting, and we know that it's only elders where elections were taking place. Now, when you analyze that data, you find that 508,647 ballots are added on the 10th. 
So you can see from that data that they, they present, Mr. Sunguli presents, you are able to isolate 508, 647 ghost cast votes, which are more than the difference between the two con leading candidates. Months before the general election, IBC commissioned an audit of the voter register and assigned audit firm KPMG the role of cleaning up the role of voters. Findings of that audit being used by the petitioners to seek nullification of Ruto's declared victory. By their own audit as at the 16th of June, the register that was gazetted on the 20th of June, that register had 481,711 persons who were not supposed to be there. Duplicates, several entries. The margin of victory by which William Ruto passes 50% plus one is less than 70,000 within this margin. The margin of victory by which is declared more than Royal Odinga, 200,000, again less than this. So the universe of the elections was already compromised ab initio, and the number by which it is compromised could affect and did affect the results. The Supreme Court judges seeking clarifications from the petitioner's legal team on the 50% plus one question. There is something still surrounding this question of voter turnout, the percentage. It's like the, uh, the, the, the beginning of where the controversy uh, is located. What, what is the relevance of the percentage of voter turnout to determining whether a candidate marshaled the magical number? Uh, the figures in the event that we arrive at figures that show that either the current president-elect has more votes than others and or um, the petitioner in petition number five in fact has more numbers, what are we to do? Are we still to declare irrespective of all the other processes <coughs> having been impugned as you have submitted um, to us today. We expect the answers when you will be making a rejoinder. We are not expecting the answers now. The petitioner's legal team will respond to the issues on Friday before the judges retreat to pen their verdict that will be rendered on Monday. Francis Gashuri, Citizen TV. All right, Shuri, thanks so much for that.